60 social media posts in five minutes, 100 business cards sorted just as quickly with all the correct details and photos. It seems like a dream we all wish we had in our businesses. Well, this dream is coming true with Canva. In today's Canva tutorial, I'll show you exactly how to bulk create your graphics in Canva in under five minutes. If you know this feature already and think this is the only thing it's good for, I'm here to change your mind because you're probably not using bulk create to its full potential. I'm Natalia and I help you create better content and grow on social media. So let's jump right in. The first thing we need to talk about is what's actually new with this update. Now, Bulk Create we've had before in our accounts, but now not only can we upload our CSV files, we can also use whole Excel spreadsheets in the XLSX file format. This is a new update and I feel like it's going to be great because a lot of our files will be in this specific format as opposed to only CSV. Now, the second thing that changed is that we now can upload images from that spreadsheet directly. And I'll show you exactly how to do this in today's tutorial. Now, step one of using the bulk create feature is to actually create a template. So to create a design that we're going to use to generate all of those graphics. So as you can see in here, I've already prepared something. So you can see that I've got my header in here. I've got this part where I've come up with an Instagram handle for, you know, a plant person. And this is the space for the tip where our generated text is going to get into. And then below, you can see that I've got a frame for an image. Now, what's very important is that I am using a frame from this section in here as opposed to the grid. So what I've done is to basically just go to a basic shape just like this. I'm going to maybe remove it in just a second and I'll just resize it like this to make sure that everything's the way I want it to be spaced. So I'm just going to stretch it out like this and voila, we've got the exact same frame below as I've had. So this is going to serve for us to connect the data that we've got in our Excel spreadsheet. So as you can see in here, probably this top heading is not going to be changed just because I opted for Plant Care Tuesday. So this would be a makeshift series of sort. And then below, of course, under the Monstera, this would also not be a changeable part. Only this part, this is the space for the tip and this part would be changeable. Now, if you have different headers, if you want to, you know, add more data to this particular template, by all means, you can do that. And once we prepare the Excel spreadsheet, you'll see that this is going to be absolutely possible to include in this file. So as you can see, we're sorted in terms of this graphic. This is a very basic graphic and notice that I'm also leaving this frame completely free. Okay, so let me just drag my Excel spreadsheet in here. By the way, you can do that in Sheets on Google Drive completely free of charge. So it's absolutely fine to use it that way. But I'm just going to use a regular kind of Excel app on my Mac. And for now, what we want to do in here is to prepare this template this file to feed that data into it. Now, mind you, if you're creating something like business cards, something that I've mentioned in the intro to this video, you would be able to just literally copy and paste the names of, you know, the employees that work with you and include the images in a separate row. And that would work exactly the same way. So even if we're dealing with content in this one, think outside the box and think how you can use it to create other things like certificates, like business cards, anything of that nature that's repetitive, but you just need to tweak some data within it. Okay. So the first thing that we want to do is to actually name our rows. So the first thing we're going to have is the actual tip. So this is what I'm going to put in here. And the second one is going to be a photo. Again, remember how I mentioned that the heading can also be changeable. Pretty much anything would be changeable if you wanted it to be. So you would be able to literally just, you know, insert another column like this and say heading in here and that would be easily, um, you know, amendable in terms of the data that you insert into it and you would be able to add it to that original template, that design as well. Now let's generate some tips to include in this first column in here. I do have a bunch of photos that I'm going to show you in just a second, but for this, we're going to use ChatGPT. Now we can go to use ChatGPT in your browser. You would also be able to use Canva, which I'm going to show you in just a second. But for now, I'm just going to give it a very basic prompt just because 
Even though I absolutely love plants and I've managed to not obliterate all of them. So this is my progress on my journey, but I'm definitely not, um, you know, a specialist in plant care. And this is exactly what our designs are going to be about. So I'm going to try to generate some tips for this. As you can see, this is the prompt I'm opting for. So first I'm setting ChatGPT with a specific condition, which is to act as a florist, horticulturist and a plant specialist. So this is where I'm setting the expectations of what the person that is speaking to their audience actually is and this is where chat gpt has to embody that person then i'm asking to generate tips for plant care for beginner plant lovers who want their house plants to thrive so i'm setting up specific information in terms of my audience and then i'm asking for the exact thing that i wanted to generate so include crucial tips on watering light fertilization all that stuff please keep them at around two to three sentences long and the reason why i'm including that part is because when you go to my canva template you can see that i don't have much space for anything more than maybe three to four lines and i don't want them to be too long but also i want chat gpt to hopefully generate something for me that would be quite uniform in terms of the length of those tips so let me see what it can generate for me from here all right, so I've got a list of all the different tips that it gave me. I think for now, as far as I can see, these don't seem too long. I might have to include another sentence. So let me see this one. This one looks quite small. So let's jump back into Canva and see what this would look like if I would include it in here. Yeah, definitely a little scarce. I think I would like a little bit more depth in that regard. So let's go back to ChatGPT and fix our prompt. And this is generally the process with AI. I, of course, am using something very, very basic. If I had a lot more knowledge in terms of plant care, I would probably be able to feed it a lot more information to make it a lot more custom and to make it a lot more specific instead of getting something very, very generic. So mind that. And of course, I'm sure you will be experts in your areas, whether you're a small business owner or a content creator. All of these tips are just here to help you navigate AI use in that case. Of course, by all means, fill that Excel spreadsheet with your information only. You don't need to rely on this, but I'm just trying to show you how you can utilize AI to speed up that workflow even more. Okay, that's much better. Again, I'm not going to try to dive into the expertise of this. I'm sure it would have to be tweaked. So again, my tip in here is to always go ahead and tweak it, change to include your own wording. And I highly recommend you always do it because there's always this fear of AI generally generating something that can be generated for someone else. So I'm going to go ahead and move these things around to our Excel spreadsheet. So you can see that I removed all the formatting. I've actually asked ChatGPT to remove this formatting and I will be able to jump into Excel and to include all of these tips on my list. Okay, so you can see that we've got all of them in here. They're roughly the same in size, but there will be some tweaking afterwards. Now, the next thing I want to do is to actually include a photo for each of those. Now, what I found works best for this particular function for bulk create and for it to actually understand exactly what's in this spreadsheet is to use pictures and place them over cells. And then from picture from file, I will be able to use this image. So first, again, I'm using the cell that I want to include the photo in. So I'm still selecting B2 in this case, and then I'm going to insert pictures and then place over cells picture from file. Now we can see that in here, I've got 30 different plant photos. So I'm just going to add them one by one. So you can see that I've just added this image. And what I'm going to do is to just go to my other cell. So this is A2, move down to A3, and then move to B3 in that case so that I'm not actually selecting this image. And I'm going to do the same thing. So insert pictures, place over cells, picture from file and I'm going to go ahead and add my second one. So you can see that it's going to keep adding one on top of the other. But again, this is the process that I found works best. And again, I'll explain later what that is. So give me a second and I'll fill that whole spreadsheet with the photos. Okay, we're done with the photos. You can see that all of them are here corresponding to the different rows for our tips. Now, the next thing I want to do is to change the name of this sheet. And this is going to be important 
just in case you've got multiple sheets in here and you want to make sure that you're using the correct one. So I'm just going to say plant care tips. This is especially important if you're actually working with real life files. So say you've got the business cards and you actually have a file with the names of your employees and you would just include the photo if you wanted to. For those business cards, you would be able to just choose the worksheet that you're working off of. If you've got like contact details, you would be able to just um, disregard them completely. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and save this one. So I'll say save in the same file and I'm going to say plant care tips. Okay, and as you've noticed, that was an XLSX file. So that means that it's not a CSV. I'm not um, bound to this particular format. I've got all of my tips. I can go ahead back to Canva in here. I can start using Bulk Create. Now to find Bulk Create, you actually need to go to apps. I do have it here just because I've been using quite a lot of it recently. But if you go to apps in here and scroll down to Bulk Create, you will find it here right in the middle, or you can just use the search bar at the very top to find Bulk Create manually. So I'm going to go ahead and click Bulk Create in here. And then the first step that you see in here is to add your data. So first of all, you would be able to actually add that data manually. So you would be able to devise your worksheet straight from Canva like this. So you can see that it has the name, the email in here, you would be able to just clear that table and then add more text columns like this, maybe add an image like this. In case of the images, this would pull from your own uploads like this. So you would be able to just select something from the media that you already have within Canva. So please mind that that it might be easier to actually use a, a worksheet if that makes sense. If you don't have it uploaded into Canva because you can just insert those images like this instead of manually adding the specific media one by one to the corresponding rows and columns. So this is quite important to mention in here. But in any case, you would be able to title these title columns in here. You would be able to then add the data manually. So this is quite a cool option if you don't have a specific worksheet or if you want to generate something very quickly. So say you had something without the images, you would be able to just paste all of those tips in here and it would work just as I'll show you in just a moment. But for now, I want you to see the upload data option and you can see that now the supported file types are XLSX, CSV and TSV. So let's click upload data from here. I've got my bulk create folder where I saved my worksheet. I actually have my camera right in front of me. So it's actually obscuring my vision, but let me just select this one in here. And you can see the thing that happens is first that you've got this sheet to select. So you can see plant care tips is the exact one that we want. Then you see the range. So, you know, just to check that your data is correct, that it's pulling the important data that you want to include in this uh, batch. This is what it shows you, which I'm happy with. And you can see the range preview. So you can actually see some of the tips and you can see that I've got the photo included right next to the tips. I'm happy to continue. Now let's go ahead and connect the data to our elements. So this is our step three and you can see a very important point that actually Canva recognized that we have both the text format in our columns and we have the image format in our columns. So sometimes it happens that it won't actually recognize this image as a text, this column with the different images as text and I'll show you exactly how to troubleshoot it in the next section. But for now, as you can see, we've got these two which are correctly identified by Canva. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the data. How you do this? Very simple. You can just select the element that you want to connect the data to. You go ahead and select connect data from here and you can see that you will be able to connect the data field. I'm just going to go ahead and connect the tips and you can see that now we've got this little label in here and this panel is actually highlighted in purple which means that we have have this data connected properly. The next thing is this frame right here. And you can see that if I click connect data, this frame is optimized for photos. So it will only search for photo columns. So this is exactly why we needed this specific file format. So we've got photo in here and we're going to connect. Then we're ready to let it generate and I'm just going to let it do its magic. So let's click continue and see what happens. We've got apply data. You can see that everything's connected as we like. Now, one thing that I already noticed is that I shouldn't have included all of those all of those numbers. I don't want that in here. Imagine that this is not there. From that point, 
if you wanted to not include some of the tips, you would be able to just untick them from here. But I'm just going to go ahead and generate all 30 designs. And voila, you can see that I've got my whole bulk create file created by Canva for me. So all of these tips that I've included in the worksheet are actually generated for me now in the form of this design. Now, as you can see, some of them are um, not maybe aligned perfectly and it's absolutely normal just because they will vary in length. So this is the role of us in here, not to leave it as is, but maybe to tweak it a little bit. But if I just jump to the grid view like this, you can see that I've got all of these amazing posts that we would be ready to include on our calendar after, of course, tweaking and checking if everything's correct. So just to show you what I would do at this stage, I would definitely go into each of these tips and I would check if everything's all right. And maybe sometimes if we've got, you know, not the kind of proper alignment, I would try to align them a little bit better. Then apart from that, I would jump into the images. So you see this image in here. It's not really cropped optimally. So I would be able to either just, you know, bring it a little higher, just like this, just so that all of our tips are, again, nicely balanced. And the distance between this under the Monstera part and um, this image is actually quite equal. So I would try to maybe do this if I've got more space for that image, or you can double click it just like that. And you would be able to just drag things along just to make sure that you're cropping it nicely. So maybe I would choose something like this as opposed to what I've had before. There's also this little, maybe kind of awkward, side in here which looks like it's not filling completely so you could do something like this as well just to be able to make everything look a little bit polished so as you can see in here I would be able to you know drag it like this or again extend so I would do this for all of these images and to make sure that everything it looks nice and I wouldn't include the numbering in here, but there you go. This is how it works. So pay attention to this. If you're generating stuff with AI and you're including it in your worksheet, make sure that it's not really in there. So as you can see in here, same situation, this little kind of wall in here looks a little awkward. So I would just do this and I'm happy with this positioning. But as you can see in here, we've got prevent leaf diseases and you can see that this diseases part is actually kind of awkwardly sitting at the very end. So maybe if I remove this, no, it didn't help. So I would definitely try to do something like this and maybe stretch it out a little bit. Try to arrange it the way that it just doesn't look as awkward to read because every time you leave just one word at the end or maybe even two words, it just looks a little imbalanced. So I prefer to do it this way. And then again, I would be able to drag it like this. So you can see how easy it is to tweak everything. And again, as a tip, please, please, please always go through all of your posts. Don't just leave them as is. Make sure that you are actually tweaking all of them to make sure that everything looks nice. But at the very end of it, I would just be able to go to share here at the top, go to download. And I always post stuff on my Instagram in a PNG format as suggested in here. So I would choose PNG, all pages, and just download all of them. And again, I would be able to sprinkle all of it in into my content calendar. Now, right now, I want to also show you some of the issues that arise when using bulk create you were so kind to include some of the comments for me before and i am able to address them in here as well so that all of you can use that knowledge and don't make any mistakes that would not render your bulk create correctly so first of all what if canva doesn't see images as an image so if you go to bulk create i'm just going to quickly select that same file in here and go through the connections. So what if this photo column in here is actually showing T, showing text? So the first thing is that very often it will be how you place the images in the Excel spreadsheet. So I think the intuitive way of doing something like, again, including a photo in here would be to go to insert pictures, and then to place in cell as opposed to place over cells as I've shown in the tutorial just a second ago. Well, 
I found that when I place it in cell, very often Canva won't recognize it as an image, as a file. So this causes Canva to just try to recognize it as a text, which of course then renders this whole cell as a blank. So this is something that I definitely recommend you do. Place the images over cells in your worksheet and not in the cell. Again, it's very counterintuitive. You can see what it looks like in here. It just looks quite disjointed. And if I were to move this thing around, I would be able to just because it doesn't sit in the cell. But this is how Canva rolls, I suppose. And this is how with Bulk Create, um, it can actually recognize the image. So again, insert picture and then over cells. This is my first tip. Now, the second thing that I see that people try to do when using a design like this is that instead of using a frame, just like I've shown you in the demo, they're trying to use an image. So let's say I've got this image. I'm just going to delete the frame and I only have this photo. If I were to then try to connect the data. So this is the part that people are struggling with very often. If you go to bulk create and have photo, if I right click on this one, you can see that there's no option to connect the data. And that's because even though in Canva, you can easily just superimpose other photos onto your photo, even though within the Canva editor, it acts as a frame, if that makes sense. For bulk create, it does have to be a separate frame. So again, we wouldn't want that to be the basis of our template, we always need to include a frame. So for example, if you have an existing brand template that you've created for yourself with something like a listicle post that you reuse for a series or reuse regularly as a part of your content strategy, if you've got something like this, like a one-off tip as a single image um, template, what I would recommend you do is to actually copy that template, then replace the image that you've got in there as a placeholder with a frame. And this this way you would be able to use it for bulk create instead of trying to make the previous brand template work. So that's just my little tip for you. Now, the other thing that I've noticed people complain about when it comes to bulk create is that sometimes the images that are included are of low quality. And what I would say you would have to do is to make sure that when you're in your Excel file or in sheets in the Google Drive, as I've mentioned before, is to not resize these images from within the worksheet. Of course, as you can see, um, when I make it a little smaller, all of them seem pretty big. They're just going kind of very much outside of the, these rows in here. So some people just have the tendency to try to reposition them or just make them a lot, lot smaller. And what I found in my testing of this feature or of this new update is that very often this results in a lower quality of the image. So just make sure that every time you're inserting something into your worksheet that you are actually including images of very good quality so that they don't, you know, get messed up in translation when bulk create is just pulling them into your account. And also just to make sure that you're not resizing them from the worksheet to to make, you know, make it much more nice and easier for yourself. I know that it can be a little bit annoying, especially that you don't have the preview of all of them, but hopefully you are not going to kind of mess up when <laughs> preparing this worksheet and um, that's how we can use it easily. I also would say that depending on the frame and the original template that you are actually using, I would recommend that you have them all in the same format. So for example, if you are doing these uh, business cards, for example, chances are that people will send you different formats of photos. Some will be horizontal, some will be vertical, some will be square. So I would maybe take the time to crop them. They're actually different apps that can help you with cropping all of them in bulk. So you would be able to do that. And just to retain that very specific ratio where, you know, the faces are in roughly the same position, just because it will save you a lot of time in terms of cleaning up, you know, your your template or your 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 designs at the very end. But I, you know, it's it really depends on what you're using as the original. So you can see that this is my original and it wasn't really a problem for any of the horizontal images that I've included, just because it is a bit more of a narrow format, narrow ratio than you would normally use for photos. So I was able to then kind of crop things out um, a little bit and just to read just them. So it's a bit of a different vibe for this particular template. 
Now, another thing that I found is that sometimes using bulk create on the app, especially if you have the images in a larger size, so mine were pretty big, I think, in general. So sometimes this thing will just stop a little bit. So you'll sometimes see the image in here being just grayed out and the wheel spinning. So if that happens to you, I highly recommend you try to jump onto the browser and try to use it in there. Type in www.canva.com and then and try to you know use the same file that you've got and run bulk create again and see if it appears to be better. Now another thing that I want you to know is that every time you use bulk create you will see all of those files included in your uploads afterwards but you can just clean them up and move them to a folder like this. Honestly, this is a really helpful feature and if used correctly, it can also be a big time saver with social media. And it's a big one. It has to be used right since we don't want a million same looking AI generated posts. It's not what it's all about. You can keep a running list of frequently asked questions that your audience has, you can build a long list of tips or ideas they would benefit from and gather them all in one place. They can simply generate a bunch of designs from them every few weeks and always have an additional post to include in your calendar. Now, should this be how you create content from now on? Obviously not, but if you use content like this strategically and sprinkle it throughout your posting plan with a mixture of other quality posts, it will definitely help you speed up your workflow and potentially help you post more. So to emphasize what I'm saying here, this is not what we want, like ever. But this though, this can be very useful and help you up the frequency of your posting as long as it's in line with your content strategy. By the way, if you want to start on the right foot and build a strong strategy yourself, then make sure to watch this video after you're done with this one because it will guide you step by step on how to do it. And I included a free template for you as well. Okay, now I want to move on to the more advanced way of using this feature of using Bulk Crate because I want you to think outside the box and squeeze as much of it as you can. So let's create a bunch of carousels this time. I'm just going to go back to here and I'll just open this file in here. This is just a template from the Canva library. Of course, mind you, these carousels don't include any specific photos, but if you wanted to, if you had carousels including photos, you would be able to follow the same process as I've shown you just a second ago, but for here, I will just have the text set up. So if I just quickly jump to chat GPT, we're in the same conversation so that it kind of knows what I'm, you know, who I am as a person, if that makes sense. And I'm just going to paste a specific prompt that I've created. So as you can see, it says in here, I'm creating six educational Instagram carousels for my houseplant inspiration page, act as a florist. Again, we've got this piece of text and then I'm specifying what I'm looking for. So each carousel consists of seven pages, one headline page, including blah, 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 two intro page, including an engaging intro to the subject, three to seven are numbered tips, and I'm specifying how long these tips are, generate a table with all of this information for each of the six carousels. So I'm going to just let it run like this. Hopefully it will just give me something very useful. Exactly what I want, I think. So I've got the headlines, I've got the text in here. So that's pretty great. And I'm just going to show you why I ask for this. So you can see that if I go to the grid page, I actually have the exact same thing. So I've got again, headline, intro, and then the five tips that I've mentioned. And let's say that the last one is going to be pretty universal. So I'm just going to leave it as is. So um, I'm going to check on ChatGPT and see what we've got. And voila, you can see that I've got all the data generated by ChatGPT for me. Now let's say I want to use Canva to generate my tips in that case. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new doc. So this is where I would go for anything kind of that I need to generate. So I'll just quickly say bulk create in here. Um, I'll change the name fully later on. And now what I can do is to utilize magic right in here. From here, you would be able to add your voice. If you have a description of your voice added to your brand kit, you would be able to do it from here. I don't generally generate too much in that regard. I don't really use Canva AI for you know, generating text. So I haven't really even updated it yet. But if you do utilize that feature, by all means, go ahead to your brand kit and make sure that you've got that updated. But I'm going to go ahead and be in here. And from here, I'm just going to try the same exact prompt that I would use for ChatGPT. So let's see what it gives me. 
And amazing, you can see that it did really well with understanding what I wanted from it. So I can just insert it. So in here, you can see that it did a pretty great job in terms of all that information. Of course, normally what I would do is to just go ahead and make sure that everything is correct, tweak it. Of course, again, I'm not a houseplant inspiration page, definitely. So I won't be doing it in here. And what you would do is to create your own table. So as I mentioned before, you can see that I've got plant care tips in here. I would be able to just create those carousels in here. Uh, and that's why it's quite important to rename those sheets and to keep it like this. So I'm going to just say heading in here. Then I'm going to say intro, then tip one heading. And then I'm going to copy them like that because I've got five different tips and I'm just going to change the numbering like that. So give me a second and I'll tweak everything. And now that I have all those columns specified, I've got my worksheet prepared for the data to be pasted into. Okay, so I've got my whole table filled and formatted so that you can clearly see what it includes. Again, we've got the tip headings, the tips themselves, the intros, the headings. So everything is in here. Again, just because this is an AI generated table and AI generated content completely, well, it's not really very inspiring. I had a chance to read through it and I would definitely not use this style of wording. For example, you know, it sounds very dry and very generated. The hooks in here are not the best. So, you know, this is just the process that I'm showing you, but I would definitely kind of go and change everything or make sure that your prompts include more clues as to what your style of speaking is or writing. So that would be the change that I would definitely include. And remember that Bulk Create is not always to be paired with AI. This is just a sped up version that I'm showing you, but you could easily just have your writing day for content where you sit down and you write all of your carousels, for example, or all of your you know short uh, kind of single image tips as well. And you would be able to just fill out a table just like that and then you know use Bulk create to use it this way. So I just want to emphasize again that bulk create needs to be used right. And this, what I'm showing you exactly in here by just going to chat GPT, grabbing everything that it just fed me and filling it in here to create graphics is not really the best way to do it. Again, mind you, I'm just showing that as a quick demo, if that makes sense. So um, if you were to fill all these tables with your important knowledge and your information and your style of writing, this will also still give you a lot more time to take care of other things or to maybe create different types of content while Canva just feeds all of that stuff into your designs and you would be, you know, you would have more content created in less time. So big, big, big disclaimer in here. So let's uh, save this file like this. And let's jump back into Canva like that. And I'm just going to go back to this template like here, like this, and then go to bulk create, upload the data again. So I'm using the exact same file. And again, we've got the range preview. Now you can see I've got my plant care tips as the first one, but I want to change the sheet to the carousels one. Again, this is why it's important to name your sheets below. So I've got the whole range in here from A1 to L7. You can quickly see um, that it identified all the columns properly. So I can just continue like this. And you see that I've got so much more data to connect in that case. So we've got our head are intro. So these correspond to the title row in my spreadsheet and I can start connecting. So again, I've got this piece of text in here. So I'm just going to say connect data and say heading. You can see that I've got a much, much bigger collection of these data points. So the next one is my intro. So this is how I would just connect all of that data in here. Tipped one heading. This is why I've actually separated mm, these two. I didn't add it as ChatGPT generated for me just because I knew I have two separate text boxes. So pay attention to this as well. And then I'm going to connect the rest of it like this and I'll see you at the very end to see the result. And voila, you can see that again, I've got all of this text just filled in here. You can see that it did a pretty great job at connecting all of that data. And again, just because the length varies depending on the tip that we've got in here, this will vary as well 
house, I would definitely go ahead and make sure that I am just making sure that everything is aligned properly or I would maybe add more text into it or, uh, you know, just change the, um, the heading in here to something a little bit longer. But as you can see, I've got all of this in here and then you've got the next one. So everything works just like that. Of course, we've got these elements that we would have to just move along like this. So this is the part of the cleanup at the very end. But you can see that I've got all of these beautiful, very simple carousels that were generated for me. Again, if they were more inspired, if you were the one actually filling all of that text and information into them, it would be much, much better, I think, in general. But you've got all of it. So it's just a matter of cleanup. And then you can download all of them and, you know, schedule them out throughout, you know, the, the kind of the coming weeks or the coming months even. Just make sure that you've got something on the calendar already, but you are filling in the gaps with maybe more impromptu content or maybe some of the, you know, the kind of single graphic tips, maybe with some reels, of course, because reels are so important at the moment. And I'm basing this off of Instagram. But of course, there are so many other platforms that you would be able to use it for. So be aware that this is such an incredible tool. It just needs to be used correctly. Now, tell me in the comments if you've already used Bot Create or if you've just discovered something new here. I'd love to hear what you think about it. Next, head on over to this playlist right here to watch even more super fun Canva tutorials. And if you really want to master Canva for social media and business, then check out the link in the description box and sign up on the waitlist for my upcoming Canva course. Make sure to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video and subscribe because that's the best way to support this channel at no cost to you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.